All right, guys. Welcome back. Recently, I've been working on improving my pronunciation with some kind of native speakers. Today, we will be working on image-to-image -image neural network because I want to know how to do that. Because sometimes I feel like I I I was stupid and couldn't be able to implement those complex. The, Algorithm on different programming languages. So I, I was thinking, okay, maybe I can try to learn the pixel to pixel neural network, so it can can do the the job to you know generate the the process by itself. So I don't have to implement those details by myself. Okay, let's now get started with this. Here's the post in this web. Website. How to develop a pixel to pixel GAN or GAN for image to image translation? The pixel to pixel generative adversary network or GAN is an approach to training a deep convolutional neural network for image to image translation tasks. The careful configuration of architecture as a type of image conditional GAN allows for both the generation of large images compared to prior JN models, such as 256 times 256 pixels, and the capability of performing well on a variety of different image to image translation tasks. In this tutorial, you will discover how to develop a pixel-to-pixel -pixel generative adversarial network for image-to-image -image translation. After completing this tutorial, you will know how to node and prepare the satellite's image to Google Maps image-to-image -image translation dataset. How to develop a pixel-to-pixel -pixel model for translating satellites photographs to Google Map images. How to use a final pixel-to-pixel -pixel generator model to translate and uh, HOC hug satellites images. Discover how to develop DCJNs, conditional JNs, pixel-to-pixel, -pixel, circle JNs, and more with Keros. Uh, you can go to that book, but I don't I will not. I will just uh, follow this tutorial. Let's get started. Tutorial overview. This tutorial is divided into the five parts. They are the first step is to what is the pixel to pixel JN, two, satellites to map image translation dataset, three, how to develop and train a pixel to pixel model. 4. How to translate images with a PAX to PAX model. 5. How to translate Google Maps to satellite images. What is the PAX to Paxel to Paxel JN? Paxel to Paxel is a generative adversarial network or JN model designed for general purpose image to image translation. The approach was presented by Fair Puasla. In the paper, the JN architecture is comprised of a generator model for outputting new images and a discriminator model that classifies images as real or fake. The discriminator model is updated directly, whereas the generator model is updated with the discriminator model. As such, the two models are trained simultaneously in an adversarial process, where the generator seeks to better fool the discriminator, and the discriminator seeks to better identify the true or false of that imaging. The pixel-to-pixel -pixel model is a type of conditional JN, or say GAN where the generation of the output image is conditional on an input, in this case a source image. The discriminator is provided both with a source image and the large 
and the target image and must determine whether the target is a plausible transformation of the source image. The generator is trained view adversarial loss, which encourages the generator to generate to generate plausible images in the target domain. The generator is also updated view L1 loss measured between the generated image and the expected output image. This additional loss encourages the generator model to create plausible translations of the source image. The pixel-to-pixel -pixel gun has been demonstrated on a range of image-to-image -image translation tasks, such as converting maps to satellite photographs, black and white photographs to color, and uh, sketches of products to product photographs. So now let uh, we are familiar with the pixel-to-pixel JN. Let's prepare a dataset that we can use with the translation neural network. Satellites to map image translation dataset. In this tutorial, we will use the so-called maps dataset used in the Pexel to Pexel paper. This is a dataset comprised of satellite images of New York and their corresponding Google Maps pages. The image translation problem involves converting satellite photos to Google Maps format, or the reverse Google Maps images to satellite photos. This, this dataset contains 1097 images. It's something like this. On the left side is a real image. On the no, on the right on the right side it's a, it's, a, it's, it's an unreal image. We can prepare this dataset for training a pixel to pixel JN model in Kairos. And we will just work with the images in the training dataset. Each image will be loaded, rescaled, and split into the satellite and the Google Map elements. The result will be 1000 corner image pairs with a width and height of 256 times 256 pixels. The load images function below implements this. As you can see, he just uh, uh, take a pass and the, the size of that, and, we, and he just defined the two empty last for fill them in less the DIR of that uh, pass. We node that image with the target size, and we get the the pixels, and we convert it to array, and we split it into satellite and uh, the the normal map. Finally, we return two. Arrays. The first is a is a input or the source file. The second array is the target last. We can call this function with the the path of the training dataset and all sorts of that same. The complete example is listed below. That's what he did. He just imported the the lampi and carrots. After he get those uh, the the two lampi arrays. He saved that uh, data structure to uh, as a compressed lampi array in a field which lamps this. We can then pr plot some images pairs to confirm the data has been handled correctly. From lampi import load, from mat matplotlib import py plot, data equal to load of that file. Then we will get the the two arrays. N samples equal to 3 for i in range of n samples. It will iterate 3 times. For each time, it will print out the, the sample and the target sample. In the end, you would see an image like this. Above is the source image and uh, following by the target images. How to develop and train a pixel to pixel model. In this section, we will develop the model for translating the images. The same model architecture and configuration described in the paper was used across a range of image translation tasks. This architecture is both 
described in the body of the paper with additional detail in the append appendix of the paper and a fully working implementation provided as open source with the Torch Deep Learning Framework. The implementation in this section will use the Keras Deep Learning Framework based, based directly on the model described in the paper and implemented in the other's code base designed to take and generate corner images with the size of 200 56 times 256 pixels. The architecture is comprised of two models, the discriminator and the generator. The discriminator is a deep convolutional neural network that performs image classification, specifically conditional image classification. It takes both the source image and the target image as input and predicts the likelihood of whether the target image is real or a fake one. The discriminator design is based on the effective re receptive field of the model which defines the relationship between one output of the model to the number of pixels in the input image. This is called a patch GN model and is carefully designed so that each Output prediction of the model maps to a 70 times 70 square or patch of the input image. The benefit of this approach is that the same model can be applied to input images of different sizes, for example, larger or smaller than 256 times 256 pixels. The output of the model depends on the size of the input image, but maybe one value or a square activation map of values. Each value is a probability for the likelihood that a, a, a punch in the input image is real. Those values can be averaged to give an overall likelihood or classification score if needed. The defined discriminator function below implements the 70 times 17 patch gun discriminator model as per the, the design of the model in the paper. The model takes two input images that are concatenated together and uh, predicts a perch output of the, the, the predictions. The model is optimized using binary cross entropy and a writing a weighting is used so that updates to the model have half 0.5, the usual effect. The others of pixel to pixel recommend uh, of pixel to pixel recommend this rating of model updates to slow down changes to the discriminator relative to the generator model during training. Okay, let's let's define the the discriminator model here. It takes the image shape. The weight in initialization, in initialization equal to a written normal number. The source image input equal to an input layer of, of that the that image shape. And the, the target input image input it's also a it's also an input layer. And we have to merge it together. Okay, we will assure, uh, assure, we will make sure the the input image has the same size of the output image. That's why we use the same shape. So here we, uh, that's why we here we would only need one image shape instead of two. Okay, then we we got a merged layer. We will concatenate the two layers, the input layer and the 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 target input. Imp Input. Then we do a two-dimensional convolution with a core size of four, a straight equal to two, the padding equal to the same, the kernel in initializer equal to the the initial weights, I guess. Um, and it will take the merged uh, input layer as as an input, and we will add another lucky reu rt waiter layer. And we, and we will keep doing this. And in the end, we get the output, the patch output. 
and the final layer only got one element or one、uh, narrow node, I guess. Finally, we define the model by using the concatenate layer and the the output layer, and we compile it. So that's the that's the discrete layer. Okay, you may ask why the final output only has one element or one node. Okay, it's quite simple because the The job the discriminator does is to determine whether the image is real or fake. Real or fake only got two,、uh, two possible values, and it can be、uh, put into one variable. For example, a logic value or zero or one, so it can be into one node. The generator model. Model is more complex than the discriminator model. The generator is an encoder to decoder model using a U-Lite architecture. The model takes a score source image and generates a target image. It does this by first downsampling or encoding the input image down to a bitlet layer, then upsampling or Decoding the bitlet representation to the size of the output image. So here you may ask, what is the the bitlet layer? Well, you can think you can think it as the as a middle layer as a rep representation of of those informations. So we will use it as a as a bridge to link the input and output images. The U-Lite architecture means that scap connections are aided between the encoding layers and the corresponding decoding layers, forming a U shape. The image below makes the scap connections clear, showing how the first layer of the decoder is connected to the last layer of the decoder, and so on. Here's the input and here's the output. We will use the Uh, at, between the X and Y, it's the middle layer, and somebody would like to call it a button lag layer. I don't know it. The 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 encoder and decoder of the generator are comprised of standardized blocks of convolutional, bitch normalization, dropout, and activation layers. This standardization means that.、Uh, We can develop helper functions to create each block of layers and call it repeatedly to build up the encoder and the decoder parts of the model. The define generator function below implements the U-Net encoder to decoder generator model. It uses the define the encoder block helper function to create blocks of layers for the. Encoder and the decoder block function to uh to create the encoder and the decoder block function it is used to create the the decoder model or layer. The TANH activation function is used in the output layer, meaning that pixel values in the generated image will be in the range of that. Okay, here we got the two functions. The first function we call it define decoder. Block. So we will use this function to define the decode the encoder. Okay, for this for the for this function, it will take three parameters. The first one is the layer in. It defines the input layer and the n filters. It it defines the loads number, how many number of of nodes we should use to、uh, create the three dimensional convolution layer. And the pitch normalization equal to two. First, we we initialize the the weights by using a read by using a series of read numbers. Then we define a two dimensional convolutional layer. It will take the the layer input as as a as the input. And if the batch normalization equal to two, we will uh add add a new uh batch normalization function or layer in in there. And in the end, we add a RELU activation. Then we define a decoder block by using this. As again, it will take the input layer, 
in there. So、uh, at the first we initialize the weights, then we create a transpose two-dimensional convolution neural net、uh, layer, and it will take the n factors as the load's number, and we will do a drop out. So we will drop out、uh, maybe fifty percent of of those informations, and we merge with the concatenate layer. We will merge the the layer in and the skip in together. Finally, we define the standalone generator model. Ah,、uh, we have to de uh define the image shape of that. We first initialize the、uh, The weights. Then we take that image shape as the the input initialize parameter. We define the encoder model with uh di with different、uh, neural nodes in it, from one hundred twenty eight to five hundred twelve. And then we define the middle layer, the the bottom leg layer, by using a convolutional two dimension. By using a two-dimensional convolution layer, and we will take the the encoder last encoder layer as the input. Then we define an activation function. Then we uh define the decoder model. We will merge the the bottom leg or the middle layer with the the last encoder layer. We will merge the the two layer together. Then we do a a multiple. Then we make a deeper network by copying those layers one by one, so we can get a a large network. That's why we call it deep 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 learning because it's very deep. It it got multiple layers, and we do some dropout at the first. Then we 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 don't do the dropout. Finally, we get the output. Okay, that's how we define the、uh, the generator model. The discriminator model is trained directly on real and generated、uh, images, whereas the generator model is not. Instead, the generator model is trained via the discriminator model. It is updated to minimize the loss. Predicted by the discriminator for generated images marked as real. As such, it is encouraged to generate to generate more real images. The generator is also updated to minimize the L1 loss or mean absolute error between the generated image and the target image. The generator is updated. View a weighted sum of both the adversarial loss and the L1 loss, where the others of the model recommend a weighting of 100 to 1 in favor of the L1 loss. This is to encourage the generator strongly toward generating plausible translations of the input image and not just plausible images in the target domain. This can be achieved by defining the a new logic model comprised of the weights in the ex existing standalone generator and discriminator model. This logic and or com composite model involves st stacking the generator on top of the discriminator. A source image is provided as Input to the generator and to the discriminator. Also, the output of the generator is connected to the discriminator as the corresponding target image. The discriminator then predicts the likelihood that the generator was a real translation of the source image. Okay, it's kind of complicated to understand. The discriminator is updated in a standalone manner. So the weights are reused in this composed model, but are marked as not trainable. The composite model is updated with two targets, one indicating that the generated 
images were real, forcing large weight updates in the generator toward the generating more realistic images and the executed real translation of the image, which is compared against the output of the generator model l one loss. The define gun function below implements this, taking the already defined generator and the discriminator models as arguments and using the Keros function API to connect them together into a com composite model. Both loss functions are sp specific Fide and to, for the two outputs of the model and the weights used for each are specified in the loss weights argument to the compile function. Here we can see that although he just used a lot of words to describe the, the logic behind how to use the, the generator and the discriminator model together, still we couldn't understand what he was trying to say that's uh, that's 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 the problem. That's where the problem. So now I'm going to uh, read the codes, and I hope I could understand those stuff right in uh, by by reading those codes. Define gun. We take the generator mod and the and the discriminator mod. Here you can say G model. It represents the generator model and the the D here, it is the D, not not A. It it represents the generator model, and the third parameter is the image shape. Make weights in the discriminator not trainable. The discriminator model dot trainable equal to false. Define the source image. The source image equal to uh, input layer of the 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 image shape. Connect the, the source image to the generator input. Okay, the generator model will take the input image and give it an output layer, I guess. Then we will uh, use the uh, the discriminator model uh, to get the discriminator model output. Okay, it it makes sense because the discriminator has to uh determine whether the image is real or fake so it has to get the the input uh, the the input source and source image and the generated image so he can determine whether the the you know the the generated output is related to the input uh, the source file finally we put those layers together to compile to compose a model it it takes the input image as the input and takes the discriminator output and the gun output as output. Oh, as the gen and the generator model as the output. Next, we can load or pair images dataset in comprised LAMPI array format. This will return a list of two LAMPI arrays. The first uh, is the source images and the second is the target images. Training the discriminator will require batches of real and fake images. The generate real samples function below will prepare a batch of written pairs of images from the training dataset and the corresponding discriminator label of class equal to one to indicate they are real. Here we go, this function will take the dataset and n samples and patch shape. Unpark the dataset. Uh, we will get the uh, two last uh, train A and train B. But for my opinion, it, the the train A is the input and the train B is the output. Choose the written instances. Okay, we will get a written. We will get an written image from from that. Retry selected images. X uh, one is the input, x2 is the target output. We will generate uh, real class labels once. Okay, uh, this is how we generate the real samples. We will just readily select uh, one pair of images from our dataset. The generate fake samples function below uses the generator model and a bunch of 
real source images to generate an equivalent bunch of the target images for the discriminator. Okay, now I understand uh, what the right means here because it will generate the real samples, so the output should be one. It is for the discriminator, remember? These are returned with the label class zero to indicate to the discriminator that they are fake or they are not real. X equal to G model. It's the generated model that represent, uh, that predicts samples. Where do you get that samples? I don't know. And we create the Y stuff. We will say that it's not real. It's, it's, uh, it's not real. It's fake. So the output should be zero. Typically, GN models do not converge. In, instead, an equilibrium, an equilibrium is found between the generator and the discriminator models. As such, we cannot easily judge when the training should stop. Therefore, we can save the model and use it to generate a simple image-to-image -image translations periodically during training, such as very, such as every 10 training epochs. We can then re review the generated images at the end of training and use the image quality to choose a final model. The summarized performance function implements this, taking the generator model at the point during training and using it to generate a number. In this case, um, three or of translations of readily selected image in the dataset. The source generated image and expected target are then plotted as three rows of images and the, the plot saved to file. Additionally, the model is saved to an H5 formatted f file that uh, makes it easier to note later. Both the image and the model field lamps include the training iteration number, allowing us to easily tell them apart at the end of training. So here's how they how they did it. I don't want to, you know, understand that, but yeah, we don't have to understand that. After all, it's just a plotting function. It will draw the, the draw three pictures for you. And it will also, let's say, it will save the generator model. I don't get it, why he just didn't want to save the discriminator model. In this function, in the train function, we will implement the training process. This train function will take the the discriminator model and the generator a uh, generate model and the GN model, that's it, epochs and n and batch, let's say how it works. Determine the output square shape of the discriminator n patch equal to uh, discriminator model dot output shape one. Unpack the dataset and split it to A and B. It is also means the input and the target output. Calculate the number of benches per training epoch. All right, and n st steps equal to a uh, bed per epoch times the n packs packs, and we will iterate that the uh, that that number and steps for every time for every training we will first get the real a real b and y real from the generate real samples function yeah of course it's the uh, this is the input this is the output real b is the output and y means it it it's one it means uh, that uh, uh, the data we get from the generated real samples is real. Then we will get the, the fake samples, the fake input and the, uh, it is for the discriminator, remember? So the Y fake here, it should be equal to zero for every element in that uh, Lampy array, I guess. Update uh, discriminator for real samples. So discriminator model that train on batch, we will give it the real input and the real output, and we will get the discriminator loss. Then uh, we update the discriminator for the fake one. 
so it's also the the x real a but with a x fake b it means it's a fake out it's a it's a fake output oh, and we will get the discriminant later loss too we will update the generator by using this gan model that train on batch we gave it the the real input and uh, calculated the real output and uh, and whether it's real or not i guess it's real why real anyway it's very clear that we can see all those process in this tutorial the following is a complete uh, chords for the whole process for implementing a and pixel to pixel neural network or JN. Okay, this is the the the, the result after ten epochs. You say the generated one is not. Uh, it may have some difference than uh, between between the the real output and the generated output. You can see here it's it's different, but after fifty training x x x poses it's uh, almost uh, the same okay after the training you may wanna using your model to do the real prediction and here's how to translate the images with a pixel to pixel model training the pixel to pixel model results in many saved models and the samples of generated images for each more training doesn't mean doesn't necessarily means a better quality model. Therefore, we can choose a model based on the quality of that uh, generated uh, images and use it to perform AD hard image to image translation or immediate image translation. In this case, we will use a model saved at the end of the run, for example, after ten epochs of training. A good start point. Starting point is to load the model and use it to make the translation. First, we can load the training dataset. We can use the same function, lambda load real samples, for loading the dataset as we used when training the model. All right, it's just the, the, the same. It's just the same. Next, we can choose a written image from the training dataset to use as an example. That's good. We can provide the source satellite image as input. Yes, here it is. Model that predict the source image. Finally, we can plot the source generated image and the expected target image. Uh, this is how he 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 did it. How he does it. This function can be called with each of our source generated and target images. Typing all of this together, the complete example performing an AD hard image to image translation with the example from the training set from the training dataset. That's how we did that. It's uh, it's not that complicated at all. It's just to uh, have 48 lines of code. It's quite simple. We may also want to use a model to translate a given standalone image. What's that mean? We must load the images as a lampi array of pixels with the size of that and uh, rescale, rescale the pixel values to the range of that. Okay, we do a lot of pre-processing to, you know, to, to convert the image, the uh, raw image, to lampi arrays. Then we do that process again, load the image, uh, load the model, and the model that predict to do a prediction. Okay, that's, that's quite simple. Okay, that's it. That's the theory part of how to make a pixel to pixel gun neural network for doing the image to image translation. I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you in the next one and I'll try to make a, you know, try to do the, all those things by myself so I can um, get better on the machine learning stuff. Bye.